GMB. Come on, let's put our hands together and give God some praise this morning. Just a quick verse, just how it stands, just sing a little bit of verse. It's just a simple song that just says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. We just want to do a little bit of it. Share your worship and worship experience. Is okay, put your hands together. Luke chapter 5, 
verse 1 through 11. If you have to say amen. Amen. We need some time to say hold on. Hold on. But we get holding on. <laughs> Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through 11, and the word of God reads, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret, I'm sorry, I don't have my glasses this morning, y'all, Genesaret, and saw two ships standing by the lake, but fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon, and prayed him, that he would thrust a little from the land and sat down and talked the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have called all night and we have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when he had done this, they clothed a great multitude of fishes, and they break their nets. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come help them. And they came and filled the ships, and that the ships began to sink. When Simon saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished and all that were with him, and the drought of fishes which they had taken. And so was also James, the son of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to the land, they forsook all and followed him. May the Lord have a blessing upon the reading and hearing of this holy word. For the grass withers and the flower fadeth away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. You may not find yourself standing in the need of prayer this morning, but if not, we'd simply ask that you would stand in the gap for someone else. And it is now our privilege to be able to petition our Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, we come to you, first of all, thanking you for being God and being God all by yourself. Master, we thank you for this day that you have made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Master, we thank you for our lying down last night and our rising up this morning. For we're mindful of the fact and realize that it wasn't the alarm clock or the rooster crowing that allowed us to see another day but it is only by your grace and your mercy that you allow us to wake in this morning and to wake up in our right minds. Therefore, we've decided to have our minds fixated and stayed upon you. Master, we ask right now that you enter into this service, that you let your spirit, spirit manifest, that you let blessings rain down. Master, we praise you, we worship you, we love you, and we adore you. We thank you for your love and kindness. We pray in advance for your healing. We thank you for leaving us with a comforter, that we may be comforted. Master, we thank you for the peace that you provide. We know that it is a peace that surpasses all understanding. Master, we pray for this body and every body of believers that stands open in your name. We pray for our seasoned saints, Master, and ask that you continue to protect and watch over them, Father God. Let them know, Father God, that we appreciate their wisdom, we appreciate their knowledge, and we appreciate their guidance. Then, Master, we pray for this whole nation and ask that you keep us all safe. That you rain down peace, Father God, in the midst of turbulent times. Father God, we ask that you manifest yourself to all mankind. For them to know that you are God and you are God alone. Not only are you God, but you are the Lord of all. And 
and that you came, your king of kings. That you are ruler of every dimension of the world and even the universe. Master, we pray for our children and ask that you continue to watch over them. That you help us to be better parents, that we leave a legacy for them, Father. That they may follow in our footsteps, that we may teach them your ways. That they too may know that you are God. And then, Master, we thank you for the privilege to just be able to lean and depend on you. We vow today, Father God, that we will seek you first the kingdom of God. We vow today, Father God, that we will lean not to our own understanding, but in all ways acknowledge you, and you shall direct our path. Master, be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Will oh, guide us in thy direction, Father God. Strengthen us, build us up, Father God, where we're torn down. Mighty, mighty Father, we ask that you bless the messenger today. That you give him the power to stand. That you hide him behind the cross. That you allow your word to go forth, Father, that may cause sinners to repentance. It may cause saints to rejoice. And then, Father God, we can't take the opportunity to talk to you without telling you how much we love you. Master, we love you today and forevermore. We appreciate all that you've done. We're mindful that if you don't do anything else, that you've already done enough. So, Master, we love you today. We adore you today. We praise you and we worship you. We say hallelujah to your name, which is the highest form of praise. Master, we thank you for the Lamb of God who sacrificed his life for the sins of the world. We thank you that we may now have life and that we may have life more abundantly. We thank you for it all and we ask it all in your daughter's son Jesus' name. Now may the people of God say amen, 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 amen. and thank God. Thank God. Amen.
receptive to the Word of God. Our preacher today is none other than one of our own sons in this church, uh, and the personality of the Reverend William Sanders. Amen. 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 Right hands as a token of respect as he shall come and bring forth what thus says the Lord and say, Reverend Sanders, Sanders preach the word. Preach the word. Reverend, Sanders, Reverend Sanders, preach to me. Preach to me. Chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Uh -huh. And it reads, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood near the lake of Dennis Aret, or the Sea of Galilee. And saw two ships standing by the lake, but the, fisher, the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drop. And Simon answered said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon, Pe when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the drought of fishes which they had taken. And, and so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Amen. 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 And for a sub theme or subject I would like to talk about this morning, responding to the call. Amen. Responding Amen. to the call. On December the 7th, 1941, the Japan, the nation of Japan attacked America 
and attack Pearl Harbor. Japan caught America slipping. For weeks before that, the Emperor of Japan came to America and talked to President Franklin Roosevelt to uh, ensure that the hostilities between the two countries, everything was good. But in his mind, he already knew what they were going to do. And after attacking Pearl Harbor, Franklin D. Roosevelt went to the Congress. And he went to Congress to speak to them about a declaration of war against the nation of Japan. And in that speech, there is a, 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 a moment in which he said something that is infamous still today. For Franklin Roosevelt said that this day will live in infamy. So we know after Japan attacked America that many of our young men, young men as well as old men, decided to join the military that we could fight against Japan. What I'm trying to say is because of the actions of Japan, uh, it made uh, uh, the men and women of America respond to what has happened. And that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about this morning. That when Jesus gives us a command, we should follow that command. Now, where this takes up, chapter 5, is the second year of Jesus' ministry. The first year of Jesus' ministry was spent going around and getting as many people to believe in him as possible. To believe in the spoken word of God that they may be saved. But now we see Jesus is taking it another step further. Not only is he going, spreading the gospel or the good news to the people, he has decided to choose a few of those people to be his disciples. Wow. The second and third years of Jesus' ministry were a uh, was about turning some of the believers into committed and faithful disciples. Now, in order to be a disciple of Christ, one must adhere to what who Christ is. Yeah. And we'll see in this text that Peter uh, uh, res uh, has a obedient response. Yeah. Now, I can remember as a child when my mother told me to do something, if it wasn't an obedient response, right. then there would be consequences and repercussions. I'm sure that all of us know that now it could have been something as simple as, baby, come here. Baby. And when I heard her call my name, I knew that I had to have an obedient response this right. morning. And it was probably to go get me a soda water, and I figured to myself, well, could he? You know, you closer to the soda water than I am, but being her child and being obedient, you know, and, and as parents, we teach our kids that, that, that they should act a certain way and carry this, themselves a certain way. Right. Now, I've heard some people say, well, uh, how my kids act and what they do is not a reflection on me, but I've been to different yeah. things. Yeah. I'm telling you, in, in my household, uh, people will tell you, my kids will tell you that my daddy was rough. Yeah. And that my daddy expected us to act a certain way. Right. And my daughters would tell you that you just can't be out here acting any kind of way. Right. That you just can't bring any somebody over to my house, right. you know, without me first inspecting them. So, you know, we, you know, they would, I, I would tell them, and, and, and they were, and they are the, some of the most obedient children that I ever ran into. And I praise God for that. Yeah. But we see that now Jesus is ready to pick his disciples and he was uh, uh, teaching and that the multitude uh, uh, was following him, that he began to gain fame in the people's eyes. But now I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, this morning, when you are doing the work of the Lord, everybody that's around you is not for you. For well, we know that even in this crowd, the uh, Pharisees and Sadducees were there also. And they weren't there really to hear what the Lord was talking about. Matter of fact, what they was doing was trying to find something that he said wrong that they could condemn him and convict him this morning. 
But we see that they were starting to press upon Jesus so much that Jesus was about to go into the water. So Jesus said he saw the two ships and Jesus decided to get into the ships that he may teach the people. And it says uh, he entered. And one of the ships was Simon Peter's ship. And, 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 and this is beautiful because, you know, Peter gets a lot of flack for being the one that denied Jesus Christ right. three times. But I'm here to say, my brothers and sisters, how many times have God given us a command to do something and we didn't do that? So when God gives us a command to do, do something and we don't do that, then actually what we're doing is denying the Lord. Y'all just stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. So, 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 so he got into the boat and, and he asked Simon, uh, 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 would he push him out a little further that that the people could hear what he was saying? And this brings me to my first point. And my first point is the given command. The given command. And it says now, uh, when he had left speaking. He said unto Simon, launch out into the, to the deep uh -huh. and let down your nets for a drought. Right. Now, do you know who Peter is? I'm sure, using my spiritual imagination, Peter thought to himself, is not this the son of a carpenter? Huh. What does he know about fishing? I am a professional fisherman and I do this for a living. Huh. You know, Peter was like, Jesus, you don't know nothing. Now, I know that you are a teacher. I know that on the Sabbath you would go to the synagogue and that you would teach the people within the temple. But Jesus, you might be out of your league when you're telling me to cast my nets into the deep. Matter of fact, if you just in studying, the prime time for fishing was not in the daytime. Peter and them would go out at dusk and go out to fish. Yes. And Peter and them would, would, wouldn't, it was very rare that they would go out into the deep mm -hmm. to launch their net. So Peter is thinking all of these things. Right. He wants us to go out. Don't Jesus know? Didn't he see what we was doing? That we had already been fishing all night right. and we ain't caught anything? More than likely, Peter was frustrated. Because anybody who fish knows that if you stand out there for a while and you don't catch anything, you, you would be frustrated too. But one thing Peter did, and, and, and that would be my second uh, 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 point, but the given command, and God gives us commands. One command that God gives us is to love him with all of thy heart, thy mind, and thy soul. And then God asks us to do is love thy neighbor as thou love thyself. So if you can't love your neighbor, then you must not love yourself. Now I'm not saying that every all of your neighbors are lovable people. And I struggle with this. You know, it's hard for me to love those who who, who talk about me. It's hard for those for me to love those who scandalize my name. But if I'm going to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, then I must love them also. See, it's easy for us to come inside the house of the Lord and love each other. See, we, we know each other. We know things about each other. So we love each other. But now, are you loving that person who don't mean you no earthly good? Are you loving that person? I'm talking about the given command. One thing you can do to show yourself to be a disciple of Christ is to love. Because love covers a multitude of sin. For if God didn't love us, he wouldn't have sent Jesus to die on the cross that we could be reconciled back unto him. Now, God is not finished with me. There are some areas in my life that I'm praying that, you know, he would uplift me from. We all need deliverance from something. So that, you know, but if we just love one another, as Christ has loved us, then the world will see who we belong to. Because it's one thing to say that you love the Lord, but it's another thing 
when you go out and do those things that he has commanded us to do. My second point, my brothers and sisters. My second point, oh, 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 oh. Proverbs, and this is back on the first point, but Proverbs 3, 5, uh, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Now, we need to recognize that. But the second, uh, the second point is the obedient response. Now, as I said, Peter was thinking to himself, man, he don't know what he's talking about. He's not a professional fisherman. He's not out here toiling with us. But despite what Peter was saying, Peter was obedient unto the Lord and did exactly what the Lord told him to do. You know, in our lives, God is going to instruct us or command us to do certain things that we might not understand. But then we have to understand who Jesus is. We have to understand that Jesus has the best for us. We have to understand that Jesus loves us more than we love ourselves sometimes. We have to understand that Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. So if he's the beginning and the end, he knows what's best for my life. And I know that, that as, as long as I'm obedient unto the will of God, then he will continue to bless me more, more, and more. And one thing we can't do is be disobedient unto the call of God. How many of us are going into those places that are deemed dangerous to witness for the Lord? I'm going to stand here and tell you, I don't always do that, but just like he told Peter to lunge out into the deep and get out the shadow, us who are disciples of Jesus Christ, we need to lunge out into the deep. Because people are hurting right now. With the COVID-19 that's going on, a lot of people lost their job, not because of anything else, but, but this virus. And we see that our government really wasn't trying to help nobody. You know, these people are suffering. These people want to work. These people had businesses. But because of the COVID-19, they find themselves right now in, 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 in some turmoil. How am I going to make ends meet? How am I going to put food on the table? But the one thing that I know, as long as I'm obedient unto the Lord Jesus Christ, then I don't have anything to worry about. No, I might not have what I want, but he will supply all of my needs. He will supply all of your needs. Hey, he'll make a way out of no way. I'm a living witness that that's what he would do. Not just for me, but he's willing to do it for everybody that's in here. Not only can the ministers be disciples, but Jesus supposed to make all of us within this sanctuary his disciples. So what we have to do is when we give her the given command, we need to respond with the obedient response this morning. Now Romans 5 and 19 states, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. We all know because of what Adam did in the garden of Eden, that when he sinned, sin fell up on mankind. You were, we were all born and shaped in iniquity. But because of what Jesus did, because Jesus had love for his father. He came down and wrapped himself in sinful flesh. He went to the cross to die for, for our sins this morning. That, that's what he did. That, that, that's what he did. And, and, and that's a beautiful thing. And he should get a hallelujah to the precious man. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I ain't trying to die for myself. So... We can get up there for two minutes <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. I'm just being honest with everybody this morning. But we hear, and that used to be a commercial. And, and I was younger, but it, it, it used to say that cleanliness is next to godliness. You believe that if you want to. I'm going to tell you 
what's next to God in it is being obedient unto his word. Because the only way we will know how God wants us to live that our life would, 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 would be pleasing in his sight is in the word of God. That's the only way that we're going to move from salvation to sanctification. You know, some people just are happy with being saved. But see, there, there comes a number step. Sanctification comes after salvation. We know that we all who follow Jesus and have accepted him as Lord and Savior, we have a crown of righteousness laid up for us. But now, uh, uh, my pastor's friend, my old pastor, Pastor John Alma Davis, said that some of those crowns will be for Jews. Some people are going to have diamonds and rubies and, and sapphire on their crown. See, that's moving from salvation to sanctification. That's being obedient unto the word of God this morning. Y'all pray for me. Pray for me. Pray. I'm just trying to do my little part. Y'all know me. I'm just black, naked headed doing the best I can. That, that's who I consider myself to be. That, that's who I consider myself to be. But we see that Peter was obedient to the response. But since he was obedient to the response, my third point is the bountiful blessing. The bountiful blessing. See, when you're obedient, when I was obedient, my mama used to this stuff, you yeah. know. As a child, when a child is obedient yeah. and, and does what the parents ask of them, yeah. they are rewarded. Yeah. Right. So this is Peter's reward for being obedient, y'all. The bountiful blessing. It said that since Peter was obedient and launched his neck into the deep, that he caught so many fish that he couldn't handle them himself. And then he had to call his homeboys, uh, uh, the sons of thunder, which are James and John, the sons of Zebedee this morning. He had to call them and tell them, hey, y'all, come on out here and help us for this bountiful blessing. Let me tell you, God has a bountiful blessing on each and every one of our lives this morning. Now, it may not come in the form of money. And you know, I bought my lot of the tickets. <laughs> they talking about seven hundred million dollars. Oh, oh, that would be a bounty for blessing. But your blessing might not come in the form of money. See, I know I have a bounty for blessing because I woke up with Jesus on my mind. You know, when you are asleep, you are living in the form of death, and, and, and you know sometimes you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, but I'm just happy even if I wake up on the wrong side of the bed. The only thing I have to do is say, good morning, Jesus. All I have to do is call on the name of Jesus. And if you call on the name of Jesus enough, whatever worries you have are going to go away. See, we need to keep our minds stayed on Jesus this morning. If America's mind was stayed on Jesus, we, last Wednesday wouldn't have happened. I'm just going to be real. Last Wednesday, if we keep our mind stayed on Jesus, we wouldn't be around here hating on each other. We would be loving each other. For as we hate on each other, just think if Jesus decided to hate on us. Just think if Jesus didn't cover us in his precious blood this morning. Yeah, yeah. Just think if Jesus said that when you go before God, that I'm not going to vow for you. Wow. See, that's what's going to happen. Jesus is going to be the one that say you are go, Pastor, or you are no go. You know that. That's military. When, when you, if, if you couldn't qualify with your weapon, they would call you a no go. And what you would have to do is do it again. And they would only give you a few chances to do it. So we need to understand that the bountiful blessings that Jesus has for us are numerous. I got a reasonable portion of my health and strength. And I've been a Newport smoker for over 30 years. I, I, I'm just telling you, doing something to my body to the start. But I believe 
because of my obedience yeah, yeah, yeah. To, the, to the master this morning yeah. that he don't take care of me, Reverend yeah, Jackson. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, I, I've all, not always thought and acted like I think now. Right. But glory be to God oh, yeah. that he saw a wretch oh, like me. Yeah. You know, I, I just have to cry out sometimes. That's why yeah. when I say hallelujah to the Lamb, let me tell you, when I scream it out, I'm doing two things. I'm giving God the highest praise that any man can give him. I don't care if you speak in 50 times. 50 times is not a higher praise than hallelujah this morning. And when I say hallelujah to the Lamb, I'm doing something that Pastor said last week. I'm acknowledging. I'm acknowledging that he is the Messiah. I'm acknowledging that he is Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Amen, 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 and praise God. Responding to the call. Listen, we don't take for granted that everyone here today that has heard the call has indeed responded. So this is merely our opportunity as Christ himself gave the invitation and the call. This is merely just our privilege to give you yet another opportunity to respond. That there may be one here today that has not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. This is your opportunity. This is your time. All you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he is the Christ, that you are a sinner in need of salvation, and that you accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, and you too shall be saved. If there's one, won't you come today? Won't you come? If there's one that is worshiping with us today, virtually, but you get to accept Christ, all you have to do is well you are right now, your living room, your kitchen, your dining room, to say, Lord, I am a sinner and I am in need of salvation. I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, is Savior, and I accept him as my Lord and Savior, that you too shall be saved. As preacher share with us, you don't have to jump through the hoops, you don't have to guess about a bowl of jelly all you have to do is accept him as your personal life you say, and you shall be saved. Didn't that make you want that? The Lord, the Holy Spirit, is ministering to you and moving you to join this body of faith. I want you to know that we would love to have you be a part of this family. And this is your time as well.
I feel pretty good this morning. I don't know about you. I think he, he, he brought me from a mighty long way. Yeah, I don't understand what he's doing in my life. Yeah, I don't understand. It's only been two, it's not even a month in 2021, and I've probably seen my fair share of death in the last couple of months, but I feel like silly right now. I thank God that I'm still here. I said, I'm still here. He woke me up this morning and started me on my way. And for that, I want to thank him. I said, he deserves thanks. He deserves thanks. He deserves thanks.
prepared or anyone is still in need of an envelope? Why? All right. Well, before we have our offering and final benediction, thank you, Sister Walton. We want to recognize any visitors that we may have with us there. Are any visitors here? Amen, amen. We thank you for being here today. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. Truly, it's been a blessing. Your presence makes the difference, and you're more than welcome to come and worship with us anytime that the Lord uh, would lead you this way. All right. We'll take this opportunity to uh, bless our offering and give our uh, final benediction. We want to thank our brother, Keith. 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 Got it. Amen. Let's also give this preacher a hand, amen. All right, our minds clear, our hearts fixed. Our Father, my God, we thank you for the offering which we are about to receive. We pray, Father God, it may be used for the purpose of which it is intended, that is the edification of your kingdom. Bless all those masters that gave and all those that had a desire to give but had it not. We ask right now, Father God, that you restore unto them a blessing that will flow throughout their lives based on their obedience to your word, your will, and your way. And then, Master, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, and what our hearts have felt. And we ask that as you dismiss us from this place, you never dismiss us from thy presence. And may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with us and for and forever. So we all meet again. Amen. Amen.